Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're checking out the Google Pixel 7 Pro in emulation. And yes, this is Shadow of the Colossus up and running in Aether SX2. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, it's worth pointing out that at the time of filming, the Google Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro have just released. So the developers really haven't had a chance to optimize their emulators to incorporate any changes, any tweaks required to make emulators work on this phone great. So this is kind of day one emulation for these devices and well, so far so good. Now in this video, I am checking out the Pixel 7 Pro, but if you've got a Pixel 7, the end result for emulation should be the exact same. These phones are identical where it matters most for emulation and that's the CPU and GPU. Both phones are running a Google Tensor G2 for the CPU, which comes with a Mali G710 for the GPU. So the main difference between the Pixel 7 Pro and Pixel 7 is in terms of RAM. The Pixel 7 Pro has 12 gigs of DDR5 RAM and the Pixel 7 has eight. And that really shouldn't matter for overall emulation, at least not right now, maybe years in the future, but right now eight is more than enough. And in terms of overall storage, they're basically the exact same as well. The Pixel 7 Pro does say 512 here, but when I ordered mine and when I checked the website, I don't see a 512 version. Maybe it's just not available in Canada. So in terms of raw performance, I'll drop a link to this phone arena comparison chart in the description below and feel free to check it out. They compared the Pixel 7 with the Pixel 6, the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra with a Snapdragon processor and some iPhones. The iPhones I'm not really worried about because in terms of emulation, iPhone is definitely not the way to go. But compared to a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, the Google Pixel 7 is very comparable. However, the GPU does seem to struggle just a little bit, and that completely makes sense. Adreno GPUs are arguably a lot better than Mali GPUs. For emulation testing, I'm doing things in no specific order. This is Skyline, Nintendo Switch emulation on Android, and this is Sonic Mania. We get an orange screen and then the Sega logo and that's about it. Here is Super Mario Odyssey. I can get to the loading Joy-Con screen and that's about it. And it's a little bit weird getting here, but at the same time, at least it's booting. Mali GPUs and Skyline don't normally play nicely, so there is that to consider. Next up, I've got PS1 emulation up and running with Duck Station using default settings, and here it's running pretty darn good. I'm noticing no real frame drops here when there's some animations on screen. And interestingly enough, possibly surprising to some under enhancements, the resolution scale by default was set to 5 times at 1080p. At 6 times here, I am noticing a little bit of a slowdown, so I'd say 5 times is probably the max you want to go here. Next up, we've got Aether SX2, and I'm going to be taking a look at Devil May Cry and Shadow of the Colossus. Using the default save settings, Devil May Cry is running absolutely fine. There's no real issue whatsoever. And interestingly enough here, when cranked up to 4 times native graphics, the game is still running fairly smoothly. There are some minor frame drops here and there, but nothing really overly noticeable. If I head to the settings and crank it up any more than four times on the upscale multiplier, the game does seriously start to struggle. However, flipping over to Shadow of the Colossus and, well, four times native graphics is a little bit too much for this phone to handle. Mind you, these are just default settings and nothing has been overly tweaked just yet. If you turn this one down to one times native graphics, there's still a little bit of slowdown in the cutscenes, but the gameplay seems to be a lot better. As we can see, when we switch from this huge open area, we go from 45 to 46 frames a second, all the way up to about 60 frames per second. And again, this is at one times resolution. And running around in the smaller area, and the phone is holding at 100% game speed. It's doing very great. And on top of that, Aether SX2 has a bunch of tricks up its sleeve to help games run even faster. You can reduce the upscaling multiplier to 0.5. It'll make the game look absolutely horrible, but run a lot quicker. And you can also go into the advanced tweaks and tweak a few more settings. But realistically here for the average user and not the power user of Aether SX2 and well, PS2 performance on the Google Pixel 7 Pro is very impressive. Next up, I've got the latest development build of Dolphin up and running and that's GameCube and Wii emulation. This is the GameCube version of Twilight Princess and it's running very good using default settings. I'm not noticing much of a slowdown, if any, in this enclosed area. However, I will say if you go to the Enhancements tab here and crank the internal resolution to something like four times, you probably will notice an immediate slowdown. Realistically, this will vary from game to game, but pretty much every single phone will struggle with Twilight Princess and Hyrule Field. 
So if you are taking a look at possibly upscaling, it will vary from a game to game basis, maybe two times, maybe three times. I think four times might be pushing it quite a bit. But yeah, overall for GameCube and Wii emulation on the Pixel 7 Pro, I must say I am impressed. And again, this is very early on and things might be optimized in the future. Next up, we're taking a look at 3DS emulation with Citra. And this is the official build of Citra right off their website. It's the latest development or nightly build of Citra. It's not running very well at all, about 23% game speed overall when playing Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. However, switching over to the latest build of Citra MMJ, which is now back to being open source and well performance is considerably better. We're running at full speed and things are looking a lot better. So Citra MMJ seems to be the way to go if you've got a Pixel 7. And last but definitely not least, we're taking a look at Dreamcast emulation with Redream. This is Street Fighter 3 Third Strike up and running and running very well at a solid 60 frames per second and this is using default settings and even cranking these graphics up to 3840 by 2880 and the game is still running at 60 frames per second absolutely insane i know this is just one game but i'd argue that dreamcast emulation on the pixel 7 is absolutely fine again remember that this is still an early look at emulation things might improve even more from here the developers haven't had a chance to optimize these emulators to make any specific tweaks to deal with this tensor g2 although this wasn't a thorough test i think it gives you a very good idea of what the pixel 7 can do i was very impressed with it overall and i didn't test out n64 snes or nes or any of those emulators because I didn't think it made sense at all. I mean, most phones out there, even older potato ones, can run those emulators without any issue. The only minor disappointment I had, and emphasis on minor because it was completely expected, was with Nintendo Switch emulation and Skyline. Skyline heavily favors Adreno GPUs, and this has got a Mali in it. Skyline is coming out with a brand new update to help out Mali GPUs, specifically the Pixel, and I'm looking forward to that one and seeing if it actually works on here. On top of that, Skyline is still in extremely early stages of development, so I wasn't really expecting a whole lot. So overall, in terms of emulation, the Pixel 7 Pro and in turn the Pixel 7 here get a big thumbs up from me. Is it the best emulating phone out there? No, not at all. If you're looking for the best emulating phone out there, probably try something like the ROG phone with the latest Snapdragon processor and also greater heat dissipation. But the Pixel 7 Pro won't do you any harm. It'll run PS2 just fine. It'll run most games just fine. Nintendo Switch, not so much, but that might be expected and hopefully in the future it'll get a little bit better. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. These were just high level tests. The phone just came out and emulators haven't been fully optimized just yet. But at this point in time, the Pixel 7 Pro seems like a pretty decent buy for emulation overall. Let me know your thoughts about the Pixel 7 Pro in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts about the Pixel 7 in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.